In this section, I will present you the secure firmware install. SFI addresses the production of the chips. There are different reasons why you want to secure your production. First one is the confidentiality of the content of your firmware because the firmware you write in the flash contains your intellectual property. In case you use a secure boot, it also contains the keys used by your secure boot to manage authenticity check and also the update firmware description key. One other reason is that you want to avoid overproduction that would lead to have your product on gray market. ST provides a mechanism that ensures the firmware installation will be secure. This mechanism is available on the STM32WL dual core only. One point to raise is that the SFI only addresses firmware installation. It is not designed to be used for key provisioning. Let's give you an overview of this SFI mechanism. First, let's start with the standard non-secure production. You have your firmware to download on the target, usually a .x file or just a binary. You also probably need to define the option bytes to set up on the target, at least to close the device using RDP level 1 or RDP level 2. Then you need to send uh, this data to your contract manufacturer. Contract manufacturer uses a programmer to flash the target chips. Now the secure firmware install means you encrypt the data you send to your manufacturer. So firmware and option bytes are gathered in an encrypted file. To encrypt this file, you need a key. SFI uses AES-GCM cryptography to generate a .SFI file. Once your firmware is encrypted, you can send it to the contract manufacturer safely. Contract manufacturer receives this file but cannot decrypt it. The programmer will send the encrypted file to the target device, STM32WL55 for instance. Now, how STM32WL can decrypt this file? Device first needs some embedded code to manage this decryption. The code embedded in the device is in the system flash like the system bootloader, but it is secured. This means this code is not accessible to JTAG or even used code in, uh, in Flash. It also needs to get the encryption key in some way. The encryption key has to be transferred to the manufacturer in the secured way so that only the target STM32 can use it. To do that, we use a smart card as a locker. It is called HSM for Hardware Security Module. So, when you encrypt your firmware, you use an AES key. This key should be provisioned to the HSM. Once the firmware encryption key is provisioned in the HSM, there is no way to extract it. The contract manufacturer will receive this HSM and connect it to the programmer. Now, let's describe how STM32 gets the firmware encryption key. The firmware first requests the certificate of the STM32. This certificate was programmed inside the ST factory and signed with ST secret key. The certificate is transmitted to the smart card. The smart card can verify the authenticity of this certificate thanks to ST's public key. Then the smart card uses the STM32 public key provided in this certificate to encrypt the firmware encryption key. This encrypted data is put in a license file. Then the programmer retrieves this license fi file from uh, the smart card and just forwards it to the target. The secure code embedded in the chip can decrypt the firmware encryption key thanks to its private key. It is now ready to receive the encrypted firmware in .sfi file format. The received content is decrypted and programmed in the chip. As you can see, the firmware encryption key was never exposed in untrusted environment. This is what makes the firmware installation secure. Thank you for your attention.